In this project here, we've been provided a photograph by the boss of the company asking, can you use my daughter in the design? He said, I know she's not a professional model, but what can you do? In looking, the mouth region there is probably the thing that I think is the giveaway that she's not a professional. So with a bit of clever cropping, we might be able to achieve something quite good. Using my guidelines as the guide, I'm going to determine what I can crop away. I think if we crop just above the nose, into the glasses a little, we will not be able to tell that she's not a professional. So the first thing is always to make good decisions when it comes to this type of thing. Don't want too much dog hair, and of course we'll clone that away once we open in photo paint. Select the crop tool, click and drag just uh, to the right of the ear, and already it's difficult to tell she's not a professional. Now with a great model makeover, she is going to look amazing. So let's open up in photo paint, and we'll apply some amazing photo paint magic. We're going to start out by using the clone tool and in the same way I've shown you previously we're just going to clone the hair over the top of that white area of the image. It's very very easy to do. Just use our transparency of around 50% when you do this. I'm also going to demonstrate for you how I like to use a pen tablet. and In this case I'm using my favorite Wacom 12 inch pen tablet. It's called a Cintiq and it's like drawing directly onto a computer screen. Now bear in mind all pen tablets will work with the CorelDRAW graphics suite so if you have a pen tablet you should be able to use yours. I just like drawing on a computer screen, it makes life much easier. What I've done here is I've selected uh, just an airbrush, a very small nib size of around about uh, somewhere between 10 and 25 I vary, an extremely high transparency, around about 99 and an amount of anywhere between 10 and 30, depending. The object here is to paint color onto her hair, but you want to keep the shape or the dark and highlights of her hair coming through the color you're putting on. And that's how you'll create the illusion of color, colored hair, because you can still see her hair through the color we are applying. It's very important that you make sure that you brush with strokes that match the shape and the flow of her hair to keep it looking realistic as you can see here. It is a lot easier drawing on a computer screen I have to admit I do like working with pen tablets in general. I don't really adjust the nib size or settings much just swap between the colors of red, yellow and green. Well let's take a look at the eyes now. Affecting the eyes of our model really will make the majority of difference. So putting on a very light blue eyeshadow to start with and then highlighting that with pink. Okay, I've chosen the airbrush tool, very high transparency of 99 and an amount of around 25. Two shades of eyeshadow as you can see and what a difference that makes. Now I'm going to add some eyeliner. So select the color black, nib size down to 2 and we'll draw on the eyeliner and that again will really give that sense of this is a much older person. Now be prepared when you do this type of thing to do it three or four times. I've actually performed this makeover a number of times so that I could demonstrate it for you very quickly. So you may see the odd little thing you think oh that could do with a touch up. But it's very difficult to do this type of thing that I would normally spend an hour doing in just a couple of minutes. And now I'm adding a few eyelashes down to two pixels and it does take some practice. I spent some time learning how to put on eyelashes, but you can do it. In fact, I'm sure the ladies watching this will do a very good job, far better than myself. Well, now that we've touched up her eyes and added all those fine details, we're going to add some dodge burn effect. Simply go to the paint tools, fly out, select the effects tool, and up on the top left hand corner you've got a drop down menu where you can choose Dodge Burn. Now all, with, all this is really doing is uh, it's affecting a highlight to some degree on the areas that you brush it on. Very high transparency and a very low amount is all you need. 
We're not after a standard highlight, but something different and unusual. You'll, it'll take you a while to work with the Dodge Burn tool, but what a difference it makes. Now, we're going to cut her out in the Cutout Lab. Now, as I've previously shown you, simply draw around the outermost parts. And what we're going to do through the Cutout Lab this time is we're going to add the clip mask to her as well. Right there, click and add the clip mask. Of course, that means we select the clip mask, the color black, and we can paint around the edges and clean up our cutout. The advantage of that is that we can choose the color white and undo any area if we make a mistake. Well, I think she's about ready now to place back on the banner and move on to our next phase. And that does look quite good. Looking at her now back on our banner background, you can begin to see the contrasting effects. However, there's still a few more things to do. First of all, I'd like to uh, come up to Effects, Adjust, and to the Tone Curve. Now, I deliberately did not do this earlier on because I want the Tone Curve to also brighten the highlights. Remember, we had a, a lot of transparency on the colors we placed on there. And you can only achieve so much brightness or brilliance uh, before it starts to look like paint and not hair. However, by adjusting the tone curve, and you can see we have a lot of color down here, let's uh, push some pixels over to the right, see if we can't brighten the image, and watch the color of the hair. Turn the lock on, of course, and that does look better, doesn't it? I'll go with that. You can see it also brightened up our, our hair without it looking like paint. That looks great. Now one more thing I'd like to do, I'll go back to Edit Bitmap, and we're going to add a little bit of orange into the hair. So I'll just zoom in a little. Now I'll select my Paint Tool and the color orange. I want a much larger nib, quite large in fact. That would be fine. I want to go with 99% transparency and also we'll go with, uh, I think we'll lower the amount down to say 20. Okay, I don't want this effect to go on too quickly. So let's start to just paint some orange and we want to do it ever so lightly and even on the, the skin tones, now remember this is sort of an over exaggerated image to some degree. So. As you can see, the hair is starting to turn orange, which looks good. And even having that bit of orange on the other colors is okay. There we go. That's starting to look better now. Now watch this. I'm going to increase the nib size way up. And I'm going to actually dab some color on the face. Just a little bit of orange on the face. Stay away from the white of the eyes, of course. It's just a little and you might not even see it in this video, but it just suits the entire orange tone on the ears, etc. That looks great. And save. We'll close out of photo paint. And now that's really starting to look quite nice. You really could add a little bit more orange to the image if you want, and maybe even brighten a little. So it is a process, as you can see. Well, in our next Im uh, video, we're going to add some text and some special effects, etc.